Spider Nam is a comic that a fan drew. Great art of a crazy story where Spider Man ends up getting drafted to Vietnam and he becomes the Spider Man of Vietnam and he's got a cool jacket. The art is fantastic. A fan drew this and he was made, made this awesome ass comic and he submitted it to Marvel. And he was like, Can we do a, a comic where Spider Man goes to Vietnam? That'd be great. And Marvel was like, No. Batman recently did a movie crossover with the Ninja Turtles and it was freaking amazing. And the best part was at the very end they do a bunch of Batman Ninja Turtles comic book cover crossover mashup shits and they are balling, dude. Like that was probably just like, I was looking at these covers and I was like, damn, dude, like they should print these as posters or a postcard set or do a run of Batman Turtles t-shirts because these images are freaking hot, yo. Like, damn, dude. Like I wish they'd make this into a little mini series like Batman Turtles crossing over their greatest adventures together and then Starro shows up you're like is that fucking Starro the Conqueror or Starro the Innocent depending on who you ask and then like just Shredder Robin we hate him and then the original Turtles cover with Batman but also more Starro hell yeah comic book artists one of Rick and Morty's greatest mysteries in the show in the lore, in the comics, is the plumbus. Like, what the hell is it supposed to do? It's They make a big ass video about it. So if you know what a plumbus is supposed to do in the world of Rick and Morty and why everybody has one in their house, including me, I've got my plumbus right here. And I don't know what the fuck it's supposed to do. I hope it doesn't come to life and eat me. But, you know, just let me know. Because I'd love to know what the fuck this thing is supposed to be. And why the fuck it's dripping juice all over the goddamn house all the time. If you ever want to hypnotize everybody and have them fall in love with you just by watching you move, do what Jessica Alba did in Idle Hands and just dress like an angel and just do this weird dance where she's just vibing and feeling herself even though everyone's kind of dancing to a different beat because I think they just kind of overdubbed the song. But I also don't give a shit about that because look at the way Jessica Alba is fucking moving. So I'm pretty sure everyone who saw this movie when it came out was just hypnotized by just all of this. Yeah, all of that. And to this day, the first thing I remember besides the hand from Idle Hands is Jessica Alba doing that fucking dance. And Offspring's there too, shit. They've done so much cool stuff with Batman, I think the only thing left to do is to actually make Heath Ledger's Joker come back and have him be Batman. Like, Heath Ledger Joker Batman would be something else, man. He'd have the suit and be all covered in grit and grime and puke and snot and blood or whatever. It'd be great. I'd love to see how Heath Ledger operates in Gotham. I know he wouldn't get along with Jim Gordon's ass. He probably wouldn't get along with anybody. And God forbid you get interrogated by this version of Batman because he'd be snapping fingers and they'd be like, tell me where the hostages are now. Tell me where they are. Like, oh shit, I'll tell you. Dominic Mysterio fell out of the shark cage and the crowd was like, <gasps> Like, we were really shocked about it, even though it looked like it's totally safe because his foot was connected and he's harnessed in, so it's just like, he's fine. But when it first happened, everybody was like, <gasps> you know, so that was cool. But like, yeah, now you see it the second time, like, it doesn't look that bad. But I wouldn't want to fall out that damn shark cage and just hope the goddamn harness catches my goofy ass. Apparently, The Simpsons were going to end a bunch of times a while ago because it's like The Simpsons were just like, ah, can we keep doing this forever? And it's like, you probably could keep doing it forever, but they don't want to for some stupid ass reason. It's like, hey, we'll have a show go on for 100 years, we can have it go on for 50, you yeah. know? But then they actually do this thing where they show old clips and then they like kind of reanimate them, like that movie Reanimator, which I love. And they show, like, oh, remember when Homer busted his ass falling on the cliff? That was supposed to be the end. That was it. That was supposed to be it. And then, like, fucking they reanimated it, and then Bart actually shows up with Homer's dead body. And they're like, oh man. I'm glad it didn't end there because that was a long time ago when he jumped that gorge. The series finale was supposedly written by an AI, artificial intelligence, and there's no scene that shows that hollow soullessness of AI than Bart's 11th birthday scene because it's low key creepy as shit. He's got all these characters from the show, but they're just standing there like. They're just standing there like so hollow. It's weird, dude. And I'm like, bro, can you guys not have these characters like move around and mingle and talk? Because they wouldn't all literally just be standing there like... And it's just like, God, it's creepy. Like, I hate that they're all just there, like not even blinking. It's literally like they're like robots. It reminds me of that Simpsons World episode they did where every Simpsons character was like a robot because you can go to Simpsons World and party with the Simpsons. 
That would have been cool. But this, I don't like this. They literally got everybody. They got fucking Krusty's dad. They got Frank Grimes. They got Bleeding Gums Murphy there. And they're all dead. And they're like, what are y'all doing here? It's like, AI brought us back. I know the Hugo Evil Twin episode is supposed to be funny and all that, and it's played for laughs, but it's actually really fucked up the more you think about it. Like, the fact that Homer and Marge would, like, like have a kid in a goddamn attic for years and years and treat him like shit is, like, just horrible. And they're like, oh, Bart's the Evil Twin, so, like, oh, that makes it ironic and funny or some shit and you're like okay and just the way they animate hugo with like his disheveled hair and like his dirty clothes and just like you're like this isn't fucking funny y'all like i don't like this like this isn't halloweeny this isn't scary this is gnarly like let him eat the chicken and then he eats the fucking napkin and like oh poor kid like you know how, how fucking hungry you have to be to eat a fucking napkin like pretty goddamn hungry and they put bart's ass in the fucking vent too you're like one time, something was sapping Superman's powers real bad, and he needed energy so bad that he had to go to, not McDonald's, that's not McDonald's there, that's three arches, not two. Anyway, he had to go to the not McDonald's to get a bajillion cheeseburgers, and all the ladies working at McDonald's at first were like, whatever you say, Superman, but then as they saw him gobbling down fucking cheeseburgers, the Borg ears, so fast, they are just like, ugh. So... But I think he's alright now, I don't know. Definitely the best moment in MCU history is in WandaVision when Vision was rocking that fucking black turtleneck looking like the baby. Never forget the time Jimmy Olsen sold out Superman. They put kryptonite cuffs on his ass and he's counting the money right in front of him like, damn Jimmy, what a bad friend you are, dude. Many people say that this image is a cursed picture of a pepperoni pizza that has way, way too many pepperonis on it. People say the more they stare at this pizza, the more uneasy they feel. And the more they feel like this pizza is an abomination and that it should be thrown in an incinerator. But I'm like, I mean, I, I'll take at least a bite out of it, but still, I wouldn't feel happy about it. I'd be like, who made this? Can I get serious for a second? I read an article about cryogenically frozen humans, like the first ones from back in the day, and it is not pretty. Ooh, we so apparently if they freeze your body, your body will only be taken care of for so long before the power goes out or the company goes out of business or they just unplug it or someone forgets to pay a bill. Then they unthaw your ass and you're just like, I absolutely love this cover of Spider-Man where Peter Parker gets arrested because they make him look like the most savage, freaking insane criminal ever. Like, I don't know what he did or didn't do, but based on this one little picture, I think he did it. And I'm like, dude, that's Spider-Man. So it's like, if you fucking piss off Spider-Man, he could bash you, son. He could smash your ass to pizzles. Did you know that Spider-Man and Mary Jane once got freaking evicted from their condo on Christmas? crazy right like spider-man you need to start taking money from these crimes one time peter parker almost exposed his powers to the crew at the daily bugle because this dude across the street was using mind powers to make everybody fight and then when peter started fighting he started whooping serious ass and everybody was just like peter are you okay I love this old Spider-Man cover where it's like, I don't care anymore. Do whatever you want. Kill each other. I'm done with y'all shit. And like, the, it's just not even, the, the story's not even like that. In the actual comic, he's looking for Aunt May, so he has to avoid a couple crimes. And then of course, J. Jonah Jameson's ass sees this and he's like, oh, Spider-Man slipping. Spider-Man slipping. And you're like, fuck you, J. Jonah Jameson. There's this image of Wolverine and Spider-Man fighting Superman and Batman, and I'm like, there's no way Superman can beat Wolverine. In the movies, Tony Stark sacrificed himself to defeat Thanos, but in the comics, he kind of gets lost in the sauce, if you know what I mean. Cool helmet, though, bro, but it's like, bro, if you get to the point where you're sweating and shaking like that, like, maybe drink better quality booze? What is that? Winston Canadian? Probably shitty whiskey. Tony, you can afford better, bro. And you could probably make the suit detox you too so you don't get so many hangovers. That's probably what he did in the future. This never happened again. Can you imagine if Rogue got the fucking Infinity Gauntlet looking all fucking sexy and just beats the fucking piss out of Thanos? And if that doesn't work, she'd always just take off her glove and just touch Thanos' face and absorb all his fucking powers. 
I'm really sure if Power Stano's had, but Rogue would definitely get him, dude. She needs to get her own fucking movie. Like, I don't know what all you goddamn Marvel nerds are doing. I don't know how the hell you let a goddamn Captain Marvel movie happen before a fucking Rogue movie. But maybe in Captain Marvel 2, Rogue will show up and just zap her fucking powers off because I feel like that's what we're all waiting for because Rogue deserves it, dude. She fucking deserves it. But of course, her character is just too strong. Like, she's too strong. Like, fuck. Like, she's too wild. She's a southern bale who will fuck you up if you look at her wrong. And, like, fucking the Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Goodness ain't trying to have that. I love this old ad from, like, it looks like 1975 or some shit because it looks real old based on the way it's drawn. But it's a Dracula or a vampire. Not every vampire is Dracula. I'm sorry. But he's got a coffin full of Doritos and Pepsi? What? Ew. No. The pics from Harry Potter's birthday party finally got developed and they are looking crazy. We're having a good ass time that night. I mean, Dumbledore was there, Hagrid was there, this nerd was there, the chick with the hair, the other chick with the other hair, the twins, the red haired dude. I don't really like Harry Potter, but I saw these pictures and I was like, I could definitely make a video about that. I'd party with those freaks. One Rick and Morty idea that could be easily turned into a movie is a string of the comics called Rick and Morty Go to Hell, where Rick and Morty go to hell. I didn't really read the comic, but based on the premise and the covers alone, that'd be one hell of a party, dude. I'd, but I definitely think they could milk that into at least three episodes, and that could be like their little first movie that people gotta go see, and maybe make it in 3D or something, or make it so the chairs move when you watch it, and the room gets hot when you see it to really capture the hell experience, and just have the art style be fucking crazy and just have all types of cool like dark art and stuff at certain points but then they get to another lowest circle of hell and everybody's there and that's the plot twist is that being on the show Rick and Morty is hell itself I'm just kidding but it's something like that something heavy and deep I don't know I'm not trying to give away too much shit for free but still if they do go to hell and they do see all the characters they stole that idea from me who stole the idea I want to see one where Morty is the villain and like Morty's like addicted to ladies of the night and he's been gambling in Vegas and just going too hard with his friends that he meet. He just to say he just meets a gang of fucking rowdy ass kids his age and he's got like his own little stand by me gang, his own little sandlot gang and then they bail on him and he's got like this huge gambling debt to this space pimp and he's got ladies of the night and then out of nowhere Grandpa Rick shows up dressed as Santa Claus and saves the day and everybody just parties at the end. That'd be a great freaking episode. And at the end, Morty's just like, oh man, I've learned a lot, burp. And then he's just like, oh my god, I burp like... Something wicked this way comes. Pretty damn good episode. Uh, Summer and Morty. Summer and Morty. Summer and Rick actually get super buff and they actually beat up the devil, which is fucking awesome. And like, you know, what else can I say about that? Like, they literally show up at his place and they jump his ass in front of a crowd. Like, what else could you fucking ask for? Like, that shit's amazing. And giving him body shots too, like, damn, dude. And then, yeah, let's just watch them beat up the devil for a minute. Awesome. The Simpsons gave Homer's best friend Barney Gumble his own comic book, which was filled with all types of illicit and explicit activities. Glunk, glunk. Woohoo, if you know what I mean, because we all know Barney Gumble likes to get fucked up all the time. Like, all the time. That was like his character, all that was his, his soul was just the drink. And I hope he gets better soon. Microsoft Paint was one of the coolest programs ever because you could just paint stuff with your mouse on your keyboard and on your computer on your desktop and stuff and just draw and just draw and draw and it looked like shit and it was super weird but it was still awesome in its own way. Computers, man, they changed everything. Before you had to get like a crayon or like a watercolor or a fucking colored pencil and to do shit like this. Now you could just use a fucking computer. One of Batman's scariest comic books is Arkham Asylum's Serious House on Serious Earth, which is a story showing how Arkham Asylum was initially built and how its creator, Jeremiah Arkham, went insane. And then it flashes forward to present day where Joker himself has taken over the whole asylum, and he looks real scary in this book. Like, I don't know what the hell they were on when they designed the look of this book, but it's mad, spooky, and scary, and it's pure horror. I hope if they ever adapt this book, it looks just like this. When they did The Long Halloween, they took the cool comic book style and completely threw it out the window and made it look like a basic-ass Batman story. And that kind of ruined it because, like, some of the magic and essence of these stories is just the scary-ass visuals, and we need that. Okay, so we all remember back when Nightfall happened and Bane broke the bat. 
And it looked really painful. Batman was out of commission for a while. But the worst part is, if you look at the cover years later, the dinosaur in the background was fucking terrified of Bane. He's like, oh my god, what am I... They've done so much cool stuff with Batman. I think the only thing left to do is to actually make Heath Ledger's Joker come back and have him be Batman. Like, Heath Ledger, Joker, Batman would be something else, man. He'd have the suit and it'd be all covered in grit and grime and puke and snot and blood or whatever. It'd be great. I'd love to see how Heath Ledger operates in Gotham. I know he wouldn't get along with Jim Gordon's ass. He probably wouldn't get along with anybody. And God forbid you get interrogated by this version of Batman because he'd be snapping fingers and they'd be like, tell me where the hostages are now. Tell me where they are. Oh shit, I'll tell you. One of Batman's scariest comic books is Arkham Asylum, Serious House on Serious Earth, which is a story showing how Arkham Asylum was initially built and how its creator, Jeremiah Arkham, went insane. And then it flashes forward to present day where Joker himself has taken over the whole asylum and he looks real scary in this book. Like, I don't know what the hell they were on when they designed the look of this book, but it's mad, spooky, and scary, and it's pure horror. I hope if they ever adapt this book, it looks just like this. When they did The Long Halloween, they took the cool comic book style and completely threw it out the window and made it look like a basic-ass Batman story. And that kind of ruined it because, like, some of the magic and essence of these stories is just the scary-ass visuals, and we need that. Someone made this picture of Batman and Wonder Woman and made Wonder Woman like this huge Amazonian woman, if you know what I mean. And I'm like, good for you, Batman. Good for you, bro. <clears throat> I don't think Batman could handle all that, but I know he would try. I know he would try. Ooh, wee. Batman recently did a movie crossover with the Ninja Turtles, and it was freaking amazing. And the best part was at the very end, they do a bunch of Batman Ninja Turtles comic book cover crossover mashup shits, and they are balling, dude. Like, that was probably just like, I was looking at these covers, and I was like, damn, dude. Like, they should print these as posters or a postcard set or do a run of Batman Turtles t-shirts because these images are freaking hot, yo. Like, damn, dude. Like, I wish they'd make this into a little mini series like Batman Turtles crossing over their greatest adventures together and then Starro shows up you're like is that fucking Starro the Conqueror or Starro the Innocent depending on who you ask and then like just Shredder Robin we hate him and then the original Turtles cover with Batman but also more Starro hell yeah comic book artists okay so we all remember back when Nightfall happened and Bane broke the bat and it looked really painful, Batman was out of commission for a while, but the worst part is, if you look at the cover years later, the dinosaur in the background was fucking terrified of Bane. He's like, oh my god, what am I... I absolutely love this cover of Spider-Man where Peter Parker gets arrested because they make him look like the most savage, freaking insane criminal ever. Like, I don't know what he did or didn't do, but based on this one little picture, I think he did it. And I'm like, dude, that's Spider-Man. So it's like, if you fucking piss off Spider-Man, he could bash you, son. He could smash your ass to pieces. Did you know that Spider-Man and Mary Jane once got freaking evicted from their condo on Christmas? crazy right like spider-man you need to start taking money from these crimes one time peter parker almost exposed his powers to the crew at the daily bugle because this dude across the street was using mind powers to make everybody fight and then when peter started fighting he started whooping serious ass and everybody was just like peter are you okay I love this old Spider-Man cover where it's like, I don't care anymore. Do whatever you want. Kill each other. I'm done with y'all shit. And like, the, it's just not even, the, the story's not even like that. In the actual comic, he's looking for Aunt May, so he has to avoid a couple crimes. And then, of course, J. Jonah Jameson's ass sees this, and he's like, oh, Spider-Man slipping. Spider-Man slipping. And you're like, fuck you, J. Jonah Jameson. There's this image of Wolverine and Spider-Man fighting Superman and Batman, and I'm like, there's no way Superman can beat Wolverine. Somehow, the Rip, the Morty cover with all the different Morty variations is way cooler than the Rick cover. I don't know what the hell, but the, these Mortys are badass. There's like Slenderman Morty, there's like Wednesday Adams Morty, Stab in the Head Morty, Surfer Dude Morty, Rambo Morty. Just like a lot, and then the coolest Morty of all has got to be this dude, like Skeleton Morty. Well, that dude is fucking hardcore, like Jesus. This would have been a good ass, like, like special, and David Bowie Morty. Like, what the hell? They went all out for this cover. I'm loving it. 
I had to go back because his cover is so freaking cool. Everybody loves Skeleton Morty, and he's doing his thing. But also, let's look over here. GG motherfucking Alan Morty. And, like, he is here to just cause all types of trouble and chaos and piss and shit all over absolutely everything in the name of Rock. And everybody else in this cover is badass, of course. I'll mention him again. Slenderman Morty. He's a long, he's a long boy. And GG Alan Morty's still gross. Stabbed the other fucking Morty in the head, left the goddamn knife in there. Savage as fuck. After Unity breaks Rick's heart the second time, or third time, or fourth time, we don't know how often they go back and forth. You know how that shit goes. Rick goes crazy on his uh, glunk and his glunk and his boop and his boop boop boops, and he just goes insane. Insane with power, madness, adventure, and he's just going a little bit too hard, as you can see, picking up his own spaceship and crushing it like Superman, and then he's just like, he's just completely just trashed and wasted at this point. Complete intervention, rock bottom, and more is like I'm 14 years old I've seen too much and Rick uh, that and <laughs> the end Rick turns into his greatest nemesis Plumbus Rick and you don't even want to know what this guy can do because no one it does one of Rick and Morty's greatest mysteries in the show in the lore in the comics is the Plumbus like what the hell is it supposed to do it's they make a big ass video about it so if you know what a Plumbus is supposed to do in the world of Rick and Morty and why everybody has one in their house including me I've got my Plumbus right here and I don't know what the fuck it's supposed to do I hope it doesn't come to life and eat me but you know just let me know because I'd love to know what the fuck this thing is supposed to be and why the fuck it's dripping juice all over the goddamn house all the time in one really good episode of Duckman, he falls in love with this 911 operator chick who has this gorgeous voice. And he's just like, I love your voice, boo. He meets her and she is ugly as shit. He's like, God damn it. Ow. And he's just like, ow, I can't deal with this. She's so ugly. And it's like, Duckman, you're not that hot yourself. And she's just like, oh, I hope your friends like me, Duckman. And Duckman's like, ah. But then she gets surgery and she gets hot as fuck, dude. And everyone's like, God damn, ooh. And Duckman's like, damn, I love you, boo. Yeah, hell yeah, I was always with you. I've always appreciated your personality and all that shit. But then she gets too hot for Duckman's lame ass and like, but she still likes him. But he's too... Someone made this picture of Batman and Wonder Woman and made Wonder Woman like this huge Amazonian woman, if you know what I mean. And I'm like, good for you, Batman. Good for you, bro. <clears throat> I don't think Batman could handle all that, but I know he would try. I know he would try. Ooh, we. I want to see one where Morty is the villain and like Morty's like addicted to ladies of the night and he's been gambling in Vegas and just going too hard with his friends that he meet. He just says he just meets a gang of freaking rowdy ass kids his age and he's got like his own little stand by me gang, his own little sandlot gang and then they bail on him and he's got like this huge gambling debt to this space pimp and he's got ladies of the night and then out of nowhere Grandpa Rick shows up dressed as Santa Claus and saves the day and everybody just parties at the end. That'd be a great freaking episode. And at the end, Morty's just like, oh man, I've learned a lot, burp. And then he's just like, oh my god, I burp like- Goku has one of the coolest and most iconic suits in all of- all of all. And Superman has this. And I'm like, Goku, I feel bad for you because you look like a damn dork wearing that suit. But Superman over here looks like he's dripping and swagging. Look at him. He even, he's even smiling like, yeah, I look good. It's like, yeah, that suit's legit. And, Super and Goku was just like, yeah, I want to take this off right now. And if they fought, Goku would fucking win. One time, something was sapping Superman's powers real bad, and he needed energy so bad that he had to go to... Not McDonald's. That's not McDonald's there. That's three arches, not two. Anyway, he had to go to the not McDonald's to get a bajillion cheeseburgers, and all the ladies working at McDonald's at first were like, whatever you say, Superman. But then as they saw him gobbling down fucking cheeseburgers, the Borg ears, so fast, they are just like... Ugh. So, but I think he's alright now, I don't know. I don't know why, but Cartoon Network used to show Gumby like in the middle of the night, like the dead of night when he retired and just ready to go to bed and it just seemed creepy as fuck. Like, can you imagine watching this show in the middle of the night and being creeped out by it? Because that's how it was back in the day and I had no context with it because I never saw it at any other time. So I always imagined Gumby to be a really creepy ass fucking gnarly show from the 70s that was just disturbing and I'm like, yeah, what do you watch? it back like this you're like yeah it's still pretty fucking scary i hate it i don't want to watch it and we're just like damn kurt we love you so much 
And Kurt's like, aww. And we're like, fuck yeah. And then we all just watched Gumby, and it was awesome. And then this episode, uh, a fucking chicken needs Gumby's help, and Gumby's like, aww, of course I'll help you. I'm Gumby, I'm a nice guy. And we're like, aww. Duckman finally kind of gets over his date being really, really ugly, and he's about to kiss her ass. And it's like, good for you, Duckman. The character development of seeing through this person's visual flaws, but other people are still giving her shit for being ugly. And Duckman punches somebody out, and at this point, the chick is like, I'm so tired of people being mean to me. And it's just like, oh, that is sad. And it's like, god damn, it's sad. And it's just like, oof. I'm so glad that I'm not that ugly and I can just sort of get away with wandering around in public without people be like, who the fuck is that guy? But this chick is like, I'm gonna change myself for you, duck man. And it's like, don't fucking change yourself for anybody, boo, come on. In one really good episode of Duck Man, he falls in love with this 911 operator chick who has this gorgeous voice. And he's just like, I love your voice, boo. He meets her and she is ugly as shit. He's like, God damn it. Ow. And he's just like, Ow, I can't deal with this. She's so ugly. And it's like, Duck Man, you're not that hot yourself. And she's just like, Oh, I hope your friends like me, Duck Man. And Duck Man's like, Ah. But then she gets surgery and she gets hot as fuck, dude. And everyone's like, God damn. Ooh. And Duckman's like, damn, I love you, boo. Yeah, hell yeah, I was always with you. I always appreciated your personality and all that shit. But then she gets too hot for Duckman's lame ass and like, but she still likes him. But he's too in Someone made this picture of Batman and Wonder Woman and made Wonder Woman like this huge Amazonian woman, if you know what I mean. And I'm like, good for you, Batman. Good for you, bro. <clears throat> I don't think Batman could handle all that, but I know he would try. I know he would try. Ooh, wee.